Walt Disney called them his nine old men, a core group of animators who were with him from the 1930s onward. The name began as a joke, a reference to what President Roosevelt called the Supreme Court of the day. But by the 1950s, Walt's nine old men were involved in just about everything that made Disney, Disney. They were extraordinary artists. They were also husbands and fathers. One of the nine, Frank Thomas, was my dad. I'm Ted, his son. When people learn about the seven families, it often leads to a question. What was it like growing up with our talented fathers? Well, there's no short answer to that for me. And even though I've known several of the other children most of my life, I'm not really sure how they would answer that. I'd have to ask them. So I did. The whole way this project kind of got started was the idea of, you know, I get, keep being asked again and again when I do interviews about how charmed my childhood must have been, you know, and what well, wasn't it magical, um, you know. <laughs> I'm laughing because... <laughs> yeah. During the 50s, Dad would have us come out with Mom oh, a couple times during the summer and have lunch with him. And then he'd take us around and show us what he was working on. You come in on the weekends and you walk up those big stairs of the animation building, the big aluminum frame doors, and you look down the hall, shiny linoleum. Mm -hmm. Shiny linoleum. linoleum. Mm -hmm. Long hallways filled with lots of pictures from all the films. And I remember packing a little lunch and going with him. Uh, and I would find a place under the movieola with my little sketch pad. I remember going to the studio with Dad and sitting at a neighboring office with the, the board in front of me. And I'd get the paper out and put it in, and I'd get the pencil. And I thought something was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> You know the rubber bands at the studio? Mm. You put a whole bunch of them together and put them between two doors. You had a slingshot down the hall. <laughs> in those days, there were metal cars, no plastic cars. The goal was to try and get it to the end, whether it was on its wheels or not, and smack into the end of the door. So I go down, it smacks, the door opens, and there's Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> he walks in, hello. Well, now, did you and your brother feel that your home life was special at all when you were growing up? No. As a matter of fact, I was, I, I don't know how Pete felt really, but I was, I was kind of envious of my girlfriends and my peer group because their fathers were firemen and policemen and they were engineers, you know, or, but mostly they were of, of the labor people, you know, and they would sell things or make neat things, you know. My dad was just an animator, you know, and it was like. <laughs> oh, here's one of those train parties. Yep, yep. Another birthday party. We were probably a little more popular than we would have been just on <laughs> yeah, our we own. We both tell that same story. Yeah. You know, I mean, we would borrow the camera or the projector from your dad and show Disney movies. You know, so at our birthday party, you had the train and and then a Disney movie. So it, you know, we were <laughs> that right there creates quite a bit of popularity. Yeah, that was the hot ticket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool that I had friends whose dads worked for NASA. <laughs> they thought it was really cool that my dad worked for Walt Disney. Charmed is, is a pretty good word. I might use privileged in a quiet kind of way. I do. Yes, I had a charmed childhood. I wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs>